stay connected, stay informed with the Northwest's only all news station, Northwest News Radio. It is 8.02, just a beautiful morning here in western Washington. The temperatures are rather pleasant. We're looking at 68 degrees in Seattle right now, but hot weather on the way. Along with Greg Herschel, I'm Manda Factor, and here's what's happening. An apartment building in Federal Way went up in flames late yesterday, burning dozens of families out of their homes. Carlene Johnson filed this report from the scene this morning. A fire Wednesday afternoon spread quickly and went to three alarms, bringing crews in from several agencies. Yeah, there were so much fire trucks and people couldn't get in. Isabella and her family live in the adjacent building. They evacuated as well in case the fire spread. We grabbed all of our um, important stuff. We put it in the car. Much of the roof on the three-story building collapsed in. Fire crews used a long ladder to rescue a woman from the balcony. Temperatures at the time were in the 90s, and one firefighter was treated for heat exhaustion. Firefighter gear, and then, of course, you have the very intense heat from the apartment building. Um, it makes it really, really difficult. Red Cross and the city of Federal Way helping the families burned out of their homes here. In Federal Way, Carlene Johnson, Northwest News Radio. Imagine having to work outside during the extreme heat. That's enough of a challenge, but then imagine wearing 60 pounds of gear. Brian Calvert tells us certain first responders really have to be mindful of safety on days like these. As we're wearing shorts and short sleeves to beat the heat, firefighters are putting on heavy coats, helmets, air tanks, and other gear. Then they run into a burning building. Now add an afternoon temperature of 96 degrees. It limits your ability to do extended work just because you're sweaty, you get tired, um, you do get beat down a little bit. This firefighter told KATU.com water is key, not the stuff from the hose, but hydration for the men and women trying to beat down those flames. We're drinking about 32 ounces of water every hour. And taking more rest breaks, which you might imagine would be torture for a firefighter, sitting there watching the fire continue and knowing you have to sit out for a few minutes in order to keep your body functioning. We're all ready to perform and, and are doing the best we can. Brian Calvert, Northwest News Radio. Here's what's coming up. Both sides agree the economy's not doing well. I'm Frank Lindsay with where they're placing the blame. At 804, let's check the drive. Northwest uh, traffic every 10 minutes. So we get back to the Dubin Law Group Traffic Center. Here's John Nelson. Well, looking at my maps and my cameras, I am seeing the heavy traffic on I-5 in the northbound direction, mid-Boeing Field, all the way through downtown Seattle, past State Route 520. No real surprises there. Slow going, Newcastle off and on through the Renton area. Again, no real surprises there, but plan your trips accordingly. We do have a stalled vehicle taking up the left lane, 405 southbound at Beersley. That's been there for a while. Traffic slow approaching the scene. A collision reported. Highway 7, Alder Cutoff Road in the Eatonville area. Left lane block southbound I-5. Main Street in Whatcom County. Something to watch out for there. Again, sunshine glare is an issue, so don't forget those sunglasses. I'm John Nelson. Our next Northwest Traffic at 814. Our report this time is sponsored by Clipper Vacations. Get away this summer with Clipper Vacations to Victoria, B.C. Enjoy Clipper Round Trip plus one night hotel from only $256. Kids have price at clippervacations.com. Our forecast from the 1530mortgage.com weather center. Here's meteorologist Kristen Clark. This long duration heat wave gets even longer and even hotter. High temperatures will peak in the mid 90s between now and Saturday with one more hot day now on Sunday with highs near 90 prior to seeing the cooling effects of that onshore flow resume Monday. It's next month the heat wave breaks for the Puget Sound lowlands and temperatures return comfortably to the 70s. And if we're lucky, we'll get a few sprinkles out of that morning marine cloud cover Tuesday of next week. In the meantime, our coastal areas stay immune to the heat with temperatures in the 60s for Long Beach and parts of Whidbey Island. In the Coma 4 Weather Center, meteorologist Kristen Clark. They're going to be sweltering again east of the mountains this morning in Olmec. It's already 85 degrees this morning. Here in Seattle, 67. Bellingham at 62. And in Olympia, it's 61. A lot of people are planning for future heat waves. Como 4's Denise Whitaker tells us more about the alternatives available. A heat pump provides both heat and air conditioning, but they're not cheap somewhere in the neighborhood of $15,000 if you're starting from scratch. Ella Zamonska tells me the roofer she contracted two years ago provided her a more cost-effective option. I decided that for us it would be better to keep a different type of vent. That ridge vent installed up on Zamonska's roof is an air exhaust vent that helps provide ventilation. But not everyone can afford that modification or do it if they're renting. That's where the low-income home energy assistance program fills the gaps. It normally helps low-income households with heat. But after 112 people died during last
last year's heat dome, they transitioned this summer to providing air conditioners. We believe we're putting our best foot forward and that we are helping to keep people cool. And hopefully, if we can save even one life by this program, then everything we've done is worth it. Denise Whitaker, Common News. Members of both political parties agreed that there are trouble signs in the economy, but they're pointing fingers in different directions. More from Frank Lindsay. President Biden says it's not surprising that the U.S. economy is slowing down. In a statement today, he does not mention recession, even though the country is technically there after the GDP dropped by an estimated nine-tenths of a percent in the second quarter. Biden notes the economic slowdown is due to the Federal Reserve taking actions to control inflation, including Wednesday's rate increase. Biden also says the job market is strong and so is consumer spending. But Washington Republican Congressman Dan Newhouse tweeted, quote, our economy is in poor health and the Biden administration's tax and spend policies are only making it worse, end quote. And he went on to say in that tweet that the government needs to get out of the way so the American people can thrive. Frank Lindsay, Northwest News Radio. So far, the economy has added 2.7 million jobs this year. Billions in green economy investments is what Governor Jay Inslee has been hoping for, and he's reacting now to some new U.S. Senate legislation. More about that from Corwin Haig. Inslee has been advocating for years for a shift from a fossil fuel-based economy to an economy centered around renewable fuels. It is clearly the largest growth opportunity for people's careers. And maybe the largest transition since we transitioned, you know, from the horsepower to steam. That's what he thinks we're getting as U.S. Senate leaders Chuck Schumer and conservative Democrat Joe Manchin agree on a deal to pour $369 billion into climate and clean energy measures. In a statement, Inslee calls the bill necessary to fight climate change and a major step forward. He adds, quote, the nation and the world can rightfully feel a new surge of hope following news of this agreement. Corwin Hake, Northwest News Radio. We're hearing from the pilot who made a dramatic water landing off Alki Beach. Como Force Paul Rivera was there as the plane was towed away. Amazingly, the pilot, John Laporta, who also said he's a flight instructor, was able to get out of that plane unharmed. John, who was flying from Tacoma into Boeing Field, said there was something wrong with the plane, which caused him to have to land it here. All I can say is I lost oil pressure, and then the engine wasn't producing the power it needed. So then I just tried to put it where I could be in a shallow place and then the people you know, came out the window on the other side and then the people helped me. John then saying someone grabbed his hand to pull him out of the water. He told us that he works with Alternate Air. It's a rental and instruction business that operates at Boeing Field. We have reached out to them. We haven't heard back yet. Right now the FAA is also investigating this. Paul Rivera, come on news. It's 8-10. That brings us to the Beacon Plumbing Sports Desk. Nice win for the Mariners. Eric Heinz is in for Tom. Julio Rodriguez hit a go-ahead three-run home run in the seventh inning as the Mariners beat the Rangers 4-2, finishing a three-game sweep. Marco Gonzalez allowed two runs and four hits in seven innings for the win and can't say enough about J-Rod. I think he's the best, I think he's the best player I've ever seen. Um, I, he's for sure the best player I've ever played with. And, I mean, when you do stuff like that, in the series that he had, I mean, the, just the season he's having. And he's just an absolute blast to play with. Uh, he's having so much fun. Uh, he brings a spark to our clubhouse, and I love watching him play. Matt Festa pitched a scoreless ninth inning for his second save as the M's improved to 11-2 against the Rangers this year. It gets tougher tonight as the Mariners visit the Houston Astros, who swept the M's last weekend. First pitch is 5-10 with Logan Gilbert taking the mound. Seahawks training camp is underway at the VMAC in Renton. Wide receiver DK Metcalf is there, but the team says he's not participating in practice while a new contract is negotiated. Also, former Seahawks linebacker K.J. Wright officially announced his retirement. He spent the first 10 years of his career with the Seahawks before finishing with the Las Vegas Raiders last season. And the Sue Bird Farewell Tour stops in Connecticut tonight as the Storm play the Sun. Bird was a college All-American at UConn. Sports at 10 and 40 minutes past the hour. America Heinz Northwest News Radio. It's 8-11 and we'll take a look at traffic and weather for you coming up in just a couple of minutes. Brittany Griner's drug trial in Russia is nearing its end. The WNBA star is expected to receive her verdict at sentence next Friday. She had pleaded guilty to the charges against her, and she said in court she did not ever intend to break any laws. I was in a rush packing. Um, like I said, I was recovering from COVID, stress packing, making sure I had my COVID test, jet lag, and I was in a rush. 
throwing my stuff into my bag. She testified that when she arrived in Russia five months ago, she was held for hours without an attorney for allegedly carrying vape cartridges with cannabis oil in them. She says that a language interpreter provided during her questioning only translated a fraction of what was said and that she was instructed to sign documents without knowing what she was signing. A Baltimore law firm is filing a class action lawsuit now against the Sesame Place Amusement Park after a second family came forward claiming they were discriminated against because of the color of their skin. And the incident was caught on camera. Yeah, I'm hurt, devastated, me and my wife. Just looking at her face, this is... It makes me want to cry every time I see it. In the video, one character appears to ignore five-year-old Kennedy Burns while high-fiving other white children nearby. Kennedy is visibly upset. And then another character, again, high-fives the other children while Kennedy's hand remains outstretched. We stand here before you today simply trying to fight and protect little black children and their fundamental civil rights. The Baltimore family says they came forward after seeing this viral video last week, posted by the mother of one of these two girls, showing character Rosita high-fiving white park goers, then gesturing no to the two little black girls and walking away. That family has also hired an attorney. In response to that video, Sesame Place issued a statement saying they are committed to making this right, adding they will conduct training for our employees so they better understand, recognize, and deliver an inclusive, equitable, and entertaining experience to our guests. The Burns family says that instance was all too much like what they experienced during their trip to Sesame Place in June. The lawsuit filed Wednesday against SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment, the parent company of Sesame Place, alleges the park engages in pervasive and appalling race discrimination against children in the operation of Sesame Place Philadelphia. These are the characters that taught our children, that taught me, that taught all of us how to be a friend, how to love people. The suit claims Sesame Place broke a contract to park goers who bought a ticket and violated the Burns' civil rights. The reason they didn't get the experience they paid and contracted to get was simply because of their race. Sesame Place says they will review the lawsuit and are committed to deliver an inclusive, equitable, and entertaining experience for all our guests. ABC's TJ Holmes. 814 right now. We bring you traffic and weather every 10 minutes on the fours, and John Nelson is in the Dubin Law Group Traffic Center. Yeah, it's a bright, sunshiny day. Don't forget those sunglasses. We had a disabled vehicle 405 in the Bothell area right around Beersley. Looks like that, for the most part, is cleared, but the traffic is still heavy approaching the scene. A collision on the shoulder in the Ferndale area may be a distraction for drivers. Uh, again, that's mostly off to the shoulder, but I think state troopers are still on the scene, so that'll be a big distraction for drivers. Also in Pierce County, watch out Highway 7, Alder Cutoff Road for a possible blocking collision as well. Our next Northwest traffic at E24. Our report this time is sponsored by Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Electrical. Call Beacon today and save $50 on all heating and air conditioning. Just call 1-800-FREAKIN and stop freaking. Call Beacon. Now to the forecast from the 1530mortgage.com weather center. The excessive heat warning is still in effect, and it looks like it will be in effect through Saturday now. High temperatures today, tomorrow, and Saturday between 90 and 95 degrees. Overnight lows here in the Seattle area, mid to upper 60s, east of the mountains well into the triple digits for the next three days or so and lots of fog on the coast where high temperatures will probably be in the 60s there that cool weather on the coast eventually will slide into the Puget Sound area by Monday when we expect a high temperature of 75 with partly sunny skies. It is mostly sunny and warmed up to 67 in Seattle now. Stay connected. Stay informed. This is Northwest News Radio 1000 FM 97.7. It's 816 right now. Greg Herschel and Manda Factor here on this Thursday morning along with Frank Lindsay at the editor's desk. The Senate's second highest ranking Democrat has tested positive for COVID. Majority Whip Dick Durbin says he is isolating with minor symptoms and expects to work remotely. The veteran Illinois lawmaker also noted he's fully vaccinated and boosted. And the United States is currently seeing about 450 COVID deaths a day. That's about 100 more daily deaths than the country was recording this time last year. Cases have risen more than 16 percent. Deaths have increased more than 18 percent over the past two weeks. Former President Trump is asking a federal court to rule that he has absolute immunity from lawsuits pertaining to the speech he gave before the Capitol riot. In documents filed yesterday in the D.C. Circuit Court. Trump's attorneys claim the actions of rioters on January 6th of last year do not strip President Trump of immunity. 
In a surprise move, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin announced that not only had he reached an agreement with Majority Leader Chuck Schumer on a major health care focused spending package, he had also signed on to climate and energy provisions. ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers is with us on our Northwest News line. How the heck did this happen, Karen? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty incredible. It was a major breakthrough. And, you know, it seems certainly like a reversal from Joe Manchin. He did an interview with Punchbowl News in D.C. and said that he was never out. He hadn't walked away from the table, that he was working with Chuck Schumer and was trying to get to a place where he could uh, get to an agreement on this. But uh, certainly Democrats and White House officials you've been talking to over the past couple of weeks felt like he was out and that uh, this agreement uh, was very elusive and that anything resembling this type of significant legislation was dead. It was not going to happen. But now they've kind of pulled a rabbit out of the hat and they have announced an agreement on this domestic agenda that would include $370 billion for energy and climate initiatives that Democrats say would reduce carbon emissions by roughly 40 percent by the year 2030. This legislation would allow Medicaid care to negotiate the prices of medication for the first time, capping out-of-pocket costs at $2,000. It includes $64 billion to extend subsidies for people who buy health insurance under Obamacare. And to pay for this, there will be tax increases on big corporations and wealthy Americans. But two big things you're going to hear from Democrats as they try to get this across the finish line. They say it tackles two major things climate change and inflation. And that second thing, inflation, that was, of course, the big priority for Joe Manchin, which is why he was squeamish and why he walked away from negotiations so many times, because he didn't think you could spend money while inflation was so high. This, though, has a lot of money, $300 billion for deficit reduction, which is a big priority for him and what the White House says will be a big thing to help fight inflation right now. Manchin has frustrated the president so often and, and mm-hmm. blocked many of his initiatives. Do we know anything about the, the interaction between Joe Manchin and, and Joe Biden? There really hasn't been any. The president has been asked about this a couple of times in recent weeks, and he has said he hasn't talked to Joe Manchin. You know, remember when all of this fell apart in recent weeks, when Manchin said, I'm not, in, I can't get on board with anything that has funding for the climate provisions. The president was asked about this, and, you know, did Manchin negotiate in good faith? Was Manchin, uh, you know, not uh, being up front with the White House? The president said a couple of times, I haven't talked to Joe Manchin. So really, this was happening just on Capitol Hill. And that was a kind of a striking state of play that the president wasn't engaged with Manchin on this. But I think based on what we see now, it does sound like Manchin and Schumer were working these things out to see if they could get to this point. But I got to say, you know, with the numbers coming out today that you guys just mentioned on GDP and this technical recession right now, this is a very significant headline for the president. This is something they can actually point to now to say, here, we're taking action, as the president put it in a statement. This is the action he says the American people have been waiting for. It actually gives them something good to talk about right now. And we're going to see him take it for a spin this afternoon with remarks on the economy at the White House. Karen, thanks for the updates. ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers. It's 820. And time for your StockCharts.com money update. Gasoline prices continue to drop across the country. AAA says the national average for a, a gallon of regular fell three cents overnight. It's now 427. That's the national average. The average price in this state is 501 this morning, but that's 46 cents a gallon lower than a month ago. GasBuddy.com says at least four stations in this state are now selling gas for less than $4 a gallon. Sprite is no longer going to be sold in its iconic green bottle. Coca-Cola is changing the packaging from green to clear August 1st in a continued effort to be more environmentally friendly. The current green bottle features features an additive that can be recycled into new bottles. A new logo and packaging design is also being brought to the bottles, with the green hue still used for labels. Another one of the world's major oil companies is reporting record profits. This time it's Shell. The British oil and gas giant reporting a profit of $11.5 billion in the second quarter, blowing past its first quarter record of $9.1 billion. In the second quarter of last year, Shell's profit was about half of what it is now. 
Checking Wall Street this morning, stocks are actually higher now. The Dow moving up about 82 points at 32,280. S&P 500 up 11. And the Nasdaq is up about three points. And we'll take a look at traffic and weather coming up next. Good morning. It's 821. And the winner is get minute by minute coverage on the primary election results. Full election returns and analysis Tuesday night, August 2nd. Stay connected. Stay informed. Northwest News Radio, AM 1000, FM 97.7 and streaming on your smart speaker. Free